You know, our dream of being able to walk down the street and not be recognised, of going to a supermarket and no one staring at me, <sighs> popping down my local boozer and being treated just like anyone else. And then I wake up screaming! <laughs> it's horrible! <laughs> Very interesting. Thank you. He's quite nice, my new therapist. Mind you, he did ask if I ever felt insecure. Cheeky sod. He hasn't met Harvey, has he, Dad? I've got no worries about my security with you around, eh, half? 18 stone, a pure muscle. And how tall are you? Just over six foot two, boss. Taller, surely. I mean, I'm six foot. <laughs> it says so on my press release. Oh. So you must be six foot eleven ish, <laughs> at least. Easily. Yes, boss. Fans, eh? It's a crazy celebrity obsessed world we live in, Troy. Yeah. Thank God I got a rock solid marriage to keep my feet on the ground. <laughs> Do you know it's our wedding anniversary soon? You and Debs, how long is it? <sighs> Two years. <sighs> Quite a milestone. Marriage is a wonderful thing, Harvey. Uh, yes, boss. Me and the wife just celebrated our pork anniversary. <laughs> No, I can seriously see me and Deb still being happily together when she's approaching her forties. Donald Duck in hell, Dad. Go for it. People said it would never last, but we proved them wrong. That is really fabulous news, darling. You're so clever. We just clicked. He's a very good listener, my new therapist. Mm. Even better than Parkinson. Really? Yeah. I really, really liked him. You said that about the last therapist, sir, and sacked him within the week. Well, that was totally different, Johnson. I mean, he made me feel uncomfortable. Yes, sir. He was the rather tall gentleman, wasn't he? <laughs> I just don't like people talking down to me, that's all. No, sir. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting another car, Debs. Why? You've got plenty already. Well, I haven't got a green one. <laughs> you better get one, then. Are you having one? All right, if you're having one. Oh, tick two, then. <laughs> hey, Dad, man, you, you seen this? What? This month's GM magazine, there's a poll on the 100 sexiest rock stars. How tedious. Yeah, but you're in it. Me? You're kidding, really? <laughs> Now, you know what? They asked 2,000 models to vote for their favourite sexy rock star. You were one of them. <laughs> Me, a sex symbol. It's kind of funny when you think about it. Yeah, well, I suppose it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Troy, stop laughing. So, uh. How many votes did I actually get? Where did I come exactly in this stupid top 100 poll? Uh, one. Yes! <laughs> vote. Oh. <laughs> you, you, you came 100th with, with one vote. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Dad. I only, like, skimmed the feature. Give me that. Give me that. Mick Upnall, number 50. <laughs> He's a ginge, a lacking ginge. <laughs> Nobody likes a ginger pube. 
<laughs> oh my god, Will Young at 63 is gay for Christ's sake. <laughs> Prince above me, he's a goblin. <laughs> the whole thing's ridiculous. I mean, it's quite obviously rigged. What kind of sad, inadequate people did they ask to vote in this survey, anyway? Oh, uh, I told you, Dad. Models. 2,000 beautiful young models. <laughs> Ignore them, Gary. They're probably catalogue models. No, they were all international fashion models, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Gary. You said yourself those lists were stupid. Well, that's before I found out I'd come last. <laughs> Who came first, by the way? That's irrelevant. Yes. The whole thing's a sick joke. Yes. I mean, they didn't even ask me to vote, did they? And with me, you always come first. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to sometimes. <laughs> let it get you down. You're big enough and mature enough to ignore it. What do you mean, mature? You saying I came last cos I'm old? No! <laughs> Just look on the bright side, eh? What bright side? Well, I expect there's lots of stars out there who didn't get any votes at all. But someone voted for you, didn't they? Yeah, someone. <laughs> Not just an ordinary someone. A top international model someone. Some silly young creature out there thinks that you are the sexiest rock star ever. You are their fantasy, Gary. Silly girl. <laughs> Wonder who she is. <laughs> Did you find out? Her name's Zoe, Dad. She's the face of the new Shag and Daz ice cream ads. <laughs> And this young lady voted for me. Well, I'll say this for her. She's got impeccable tits. Taste. <laughs> oh, if I wasn't a happily married man. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, do you like that new Shaggy Does ice cream, then? Oh, hello. <laughs> yes, we was just discussing how much we like it as an ice cream. <laughs> Weren't we, Troy? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Gary, it says here on your press release that you're six foot tall. Yes. <laughs> right. Right, I want to talk gifts. Eh? For our anniversary. Well, I what? Tattoos! <laughs> of each other's names on our butt cheeks with a Venetian heart motif. <laughs> Don't you want everyone to know that we belong to each other for always? Uh, yeah, of course I do, darling. It's just that, uh, you know, tattoos don't really fit in with my lifestyle these days, do they? What, sitting on your bum all day doing nothing? <laughs> yeah, it would hurt. <laughs> well, I suppose it is a bit undignified for someone your age. Eh? Hey? No, no. No, you're right. We've all got to grow out of following the latest fashion fads eventually. Oh, actually, I, I changed my mind. I mean, it's all right for people like David Beckham, who are associated in the public mind with youth and fitness and virility. Uh, actually, Debs, I think I should have a tattoo. No, Gary, I'm going to cancel it. Debs, I want a tattoo! <laughs> are you sure? Yes! <laughs> OK, I'll arrange it. Good. <sighs> Honestly, Gary, you always get your own way. <laughs> Darling! How the bloody hell did that happen? <laughs> Debs wants me to have her name tattooed on my bum. It's 
Very big this year, sir. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Johnson? His and hers tattoos, sir. All the rage, apparently. Oh, right. But still, you don't want to get stuck with one for life, do you? No, sir. Well, I mean, perish the thought, but, you know, what if something happened to me and Debs and I was to meet someone new? <laughs> well, I was involved with other women before Debs, wasn't I? I mean, what if I had all their names tattooed on my bum when I met her? How would that have looked? Like a telephone doodle pad, sir. <laughs> There must be some compromise I can come to. Oh, there is a middle way, sir. Down the crack. <laughs> Where it won't show. You fancy her, don't you? Troy, what are you saying? W why do you want a phone number, then? Haven't you heard of common courtesy? Who brought you up? Mum. <laughs> Kelly Joe? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, Troy, if this young lady has seen fit to pay me an elegant compliment, it would be churlish of me not to acknowledge it. You know, with an appropriate thank you note. Maybe a discreet bunch of 12 dozen red roses. <laughs> and a seriously expensive vintage bottle of champagne. Like a magnum or whatever size it is you smash against ships. <laughs> I mean, in the fullness of time, or some future date in the future, we might set up a meet so I could discuss fostering her talents. <laughs> her career, Troy. Maybe I could give her a leg over, up. <laughs> leg up, you cynical twat. <laughs> uh. Gary, our marriage, we have to talk about it. Do we? Yes. Oh. It's serious. What, uh, talk now? No, 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 next Tuesday. It's for Marie Claire. Oh, fine, fine. I just want the usual celebrity tips on a happy marital sex life, you know. So I'll just give them my usual spiel about being a cook in the kitchen, a lady in the parlour and a tart in the bedroom. Or Catwoman. <laughs> Whatever. Gary, are you all right? Yeah, yeah. What am I talking about, bedroom? Johnson, is the whirlpool bath heated? I believe so, madam. I'll get my wetsuit. <gasps> scuba dooba doo. Scuba dooba, don't bother, darling. I'm not in the mood. <laughs> okay, you sit there and we'll finish off that game where I dressed up in my French maid's uniform and dusted you. I don't remember that. <laughs> you were in the beekeeper's mask and the butler's uniform. Oh, right. Butler's uniform? Like Johnson wears. When was that? Last Thursday. You stood in the doorway with the lights off, just watching me and breathing. <laughs> it was so sexy. You were so big and tall and stern. Well, I know I'm big and tall, but honestly, Debs, I don't remember. Must have been pissed. We got interrupted. The butler's bell rang and you were so in character that you just grunted and ran off. <laughs> <laughs> I think we embarrassed Johnson. He's a bit of a prude, isn't he? But he's not here now. <sighs> Look, Debs, I'm a bit tired, yeah? <sighs> Gary, half the time I talk to you, your mind seems somewhere else. Yeah, whatever. Fine by me. <laughs> Can I have a 69, please? <laughs> With a Mars bar.
So, you've become obsessed with a girl you saw in a magazine, a girl you've never met, who is a model. I mean, what am I getting myself into? I'm married to a wonderful, attractive, supportive woman, and here I am planning secret trysts with a cover girl half my age. I think I need help. Mm, I think you do, Gary. So, when I go out with Zoe, if anyone asks, I'll say I was with you. All right. Can I talk to you, man to man? No. <laughs> Dad, what's happening to you? The, the music, the dancing? You'll be dressing up in really trendy clothes and trying to look young next. <laughs> These are trendy clothes, Troy. Yeah, 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 with respect, man. <laughs> but, like, this thing with Zoe, uh, have you, like, thought things through? Yes. I've talked about it exhaustively with my therapist. And I have decided that I have genuine, deep and sincere feelings of having gone off Debs for a bit. <laughs> I'm going through a kind of crisis, actually. Yeah, but, Dad... I mean, God knows, Debs is the person I feel sorry for. It's not easy for her living with a highly sensitive, complex, vulnerable person like myself. That's why I owe it to her to restore my inner worth. By todging someone else? <laughs> Maybe I need to explore that facet of my sexuality as an artist. <laughs> Dad, you, you, you're married. Troy, an exclusive monogamous marriage is the highest ideal we can aspire to. And if this is what it takes for me to save mine, I'm prepared to do it. <laughs> Listen, son, I genuinely believe I'd be a lot more honest all round if I went behind Debs's back and porked this bird. <laughs> and I also happen to believe that Debs would be glad about it if she knew my reasons for doing it. <laughs> You should tell her, sir. <laughs> Why spoil the surprise? <laughs> Is everything all right, madam? Well, I think so, Johnson. What do you think? Fine, absolutely fine. <laughs> there's something wrong with me and Gary and I just don't understand what it is. I finally thought I got the whole thing about right. The ideal pairing of two equal halves partnering and combining with each other in perfect harmonious balanced oneness. It is. It's like a ripe peach. <laughs> what? Your marriage, madam. <laughs> You're not really going to phone her, are you, sir? Of course not, Johnson. You are. <laughs> Out of the blue, sir, just like that. Now, tell her you got Gary Bloke on the line, wish him to speak to her, and then pass it back to me. Hello, Miss Zoe Jones. I have Mr Gary Bloke on the line for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, who is it? It's Zoe. Oh, hi. Hello. Hello. Gary Bloke. Can't believe it. You've always been a real hero of mine. Got all your records and everything. I've been a big fan of yours since I was a young girl. Right. Uh, you are a young girl, aren't you? <laughs> I meant really young, you know, like school and stuff. Oh! <laughs> I really like your music. Oh, thank you. And I really like your... body. <laughs> really? Yeah. Thanks. We got a lot in common, haven't we? 
both of us have, yeah. I've got my music, you've got your body. <laughs> Go, we can really talk to each other, can't we? Yeah. <laughs> like, really communicate. Yeah. Cos, you know, there's some people who think just cos you look good, you must be uh, self-obsessed and vain and really stupid and can't really have an interesting conversation. Do they? Who says that about me? <laughs> no. No, me, silly. Oh! <laughs> you used to think that about me. <laughs> <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> Self-obsessed, moi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are funny. I love your sense of humour. <laughs> 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 anyway. <laughs> so, uh, why don't I get my people to talk to your people and set something up? Yeah, brilliant. <gasps> Ciao for now. Has Gary said anything to you? I'm worried about him. No. He's just not interested in me sexually. There are other danger signs, too. Like he started taking a pride in his appearance <laughs> and buying fashionable clothes and going to the gym. I mean, I don't want to believe it, but it all points to the same thing, doesn't it? Does it? <laughs> <coughs> I have to ask you something, Troy, and I want an honest answer. <laughs> Do you think he's becoming gay? <laughs> No way, Debs. Oh, I'm sure he's not. He's been married loads of times to loads of women. How could he be a practising homosexual? Maybe he's been practising on women. <laughs> uh, yeah, hello. Uh, I'd like to book a suite for tonight, please. Uh, the name's... Uh... Um, McTavish. Yeah, um, uh, Mick McTavish. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold. You were right about this false name ploy, Dad. They think you're just an ordinary person. <laughs> right. You're fully booked. Oh, well, it is for Gary Bloke, really. Yeah, the Gary Bloke. But he doesn't want anyone to know about it. <laughs> Great. Right, thanks. All right, ciao then. Sorted. <laughs> I've never felt like this before, Johnson. I can't eat, I can't sleep, I can't concentrate on anything. My heart beats racing. I feel like I'm walking on air. You know what this is, don't you? Magic mushrooms, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Johnson. I want to keep a clear head for tonight. I want everything to be perfect. Oh, as soon as I saw her, I knew we was going to get on. Well, you can tell that from a photograph, can you, sir? You can, if you're visually orientated like me, yes. A picture can send a very powerful visual signal. <laughs> like buy an ice cream now, sir. <laughs> what are you talking about, ice cream? I'm talking about a potentially deep, meaningful relationship between twin souls. Yes, sir, like you and your pet pig. <laughs> eh? Your pet Vietnamese pot-bellied pig, sir. A one-time must-have celebrity accessory. Fully house-trained, became like one of the family. You're very fond of her, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh. Whatever happened to Chop Chop? You ate her. <laughs> well, all it did was sit around the house all day doing nothing except snorting. I mean, who wants to look after something like that? <laughs> Indeed, sir. And then the fat little bastard ate my stash. Which is why you ate her. <laughs> oh, I never had a rush off bacon before. <laughs> Talk about fried. <laughs> and that was the end of your vegetarian fad phase, sir. OK, the pig was a whim, but it wasn't a very long whim, was it? And that doesn't mean that my feelings for Zoe are superficial, because they are not, obviously. Because, A, she is a brunette, and, B, she has normal-sized breasts. <laughs> I, 
think that proves that I'm serious. Passionately serious. But not too serious, not too shallow, not too deep. That's me. Just the right thickness. <laughs> Don't even say a word. Oh, Open the bloody door. That was your fault. How could you let me walk in there like that? She was like a bloody giraffe. <laughs> Hotel suite. You knew the hotel would be on the phone to the papers as soon as you booked it under your real name. And me getting tipped off by a gossip columnist was so funny and sexy and brilliant. <sighs> yeah, well, I'm glad you liked it. Sort of like a rehearsal for our anniversary. <sighs> An undress rehearsal. <laughs> Come on, girl, just get these trousers off. Ooh. <sighs> Ooh. Happy anniversary. It's tattoo time. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. What's that? 